Welcome, welcome to Devoted to a Soldier Resource Panel, and tonight it's Cocktails and Entrepreneurs, which this is not Heroes Vodka. I wish it was at this moment, but we would not be getting through today if it was, I'm just saying. And with me tonight is Travis and Ivan. How are you guys? Good, how are you, Danny? Great, Danny, how are you? I am fantastic, loving it. So before we get started, introduce yourselves a little bit to the world, who you are. <clears throat> Travis, go ahead. Uh, my name is Travis McVeigh, and I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran. Also had a brief stint in the Army Reserves between the ages of 16 and 18, then with the Marine Corps after that. I've started now, this is two companies. I have a third one going. Actually, I'm the founder of Heroes Vodka, the official spirit of a grateful nation. Uh, the Heroes Custom Cup Company. I've gotten to write a book called Heroes of the Stage, and we're also working on a new wellness uh, product, too, as well. Man of many hats. And yeah. Ivan, you're up next. You're another man of many hats. Perfect. How, how though, Danny, do I compete with that resume? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service, Travis. That's an honor. Uh, my name's Ivan Boyer. Uh, I'm a disabled Army veteran. Uh, 10 years in service. Uh, I am also the Chief Executive Officer for the United States Veterans and Chamber of Commerce, and I am the founder for the Guardian Craft Brewery Network. Awesome. Which is, yeah, right? Look, they're yeah. wowing each other. We haven't even started, but we're going to dig right in because you guys have some great value. You're both very successful. You're forward thinking, which I love. And that is what it's all about, right? Sharing what's here to out there. So yeah. perfect segue because many people think there are no new ideas out there. So how would you respond to that by... Yeah, that's one thing I hear a lot with people. They're afraid to share their ideas or they're afraid that there's nothing new out there. But the fact is, all you have to do is put your story and skills to that because there's all kinds of things that's existed for centuries, like vodka, for instance. It wasn't anything new that I created. I just looked at people that have been successful at it. You just have to come to the question to yourself, can you do it better? Are you motivated to do that? If you find your passion, you'll find your direction. And it took me 38 years almost, and I'll... Unfortunately, the tragedy of losing two friends, but sometimes greatness comes through tragedy and it's post-traumatic growth that we can grow from. And a lot of times the media and people try to tell us since we've been injured or something's wrong with us, we have a disorder. That's not always the case. Sometimes traumatic events can make you better than what you were before. And that's something that we should celebrate. It's, if you got it too easy, you never grow. That's kind of been my take on it. Mm, and just, like getting, just getting out there and networking. And Ivan, how we met, it's funny, like two or three days before the first show I did with you, I guess Andrew had posted something about our cups and then Ivan reached out to me and that's how I met him, Matt, that I seen that he was going to be on the panel. I was like, how did that happen? That's God's will. That's, that's God just like, that's his work. There's no question about that. But I, how would you respond to that to people when they're like, there's just, you know, there's no nothing new. There's nothing special that I got. Well, it's not that there isn't anything special. And there probably isn't anything new. Uh, but that's what R&D is all about. R&D is taking something that is existing or pre-existing, changing it and making it newer and better, and then bringing that to the market, bringing that opportunity to the community that you're doing business with. So, yeah, there may be, not be anything new in its foundation, but you can change it to make it new and make it better. And that's kind of what Travis did with Heroes Vodka. That's a good example for that. So, yeah, yeah I love that. I, I love that. Like, step one in all of this is like, um, all you gotta do is change it and tweak it, put your story <clears throat> and your passion behind it, and bada bing, bada bing, you're, you know, you're in business. So, yeah, look, look how many car companies there are, how many tire companies there are, how many different everything's there coffee everything there's so many different brands but is it the same thing it's just their story and their quality behind it yeah and isn't that funny how we see all these things and we take all these options but when we kind of apply it to ourselves we forget that oh yeah i'm right in that mix with my ideas and my stories it's funny how our minds um work so what do you do once you have the idea or maybe you even have the <clears throat> business going you know now what 
you know, what veteran entrepreneur resources are there out there? Like, what would you suggest? Well, that's my first start, start was research. I researched everything I could about different products and just happened to come that vodka outsells all the other spirit categories combined. It's older. I mean, it's seasonless. It's gender neutral. And you can make money at it while you're asleep. That's the biggest key is to create a product that you make money from when you're asleep. We have to go out there and hustle constantly 24 hours a day. But uh, where I started out was the Small Business Administration, which they have a small business development center here in Murfreesboro. I think most counties have those. If not, you can find that online through the SBA. And I met a great counselor who's a World War II veteran, helped me <laughs> give the confidence I needed and showed me a magazine I think we talked about last time called Vetrepreneur, the National Veteran Owned Business Association. I seen a guy became a really good friend of mine, Larry Broughton, a former Green Beret who now owns 22 hotels or more. He was dyslexic and he's got a great story, but I saw his story and many other veterans that had done this. I'm like, look, I've had the same training they had. If they can do it, I can do it. So that's what motivated me, you know, put one foot in front of the other and just keep going because you're going to have doubters, you're going to have haters. And, you know, it's, it's very hard to do your own business. If it's easy, everybody would be doing it. That's the thing, you know, but in the military, especially in the Marines, I know it wasn't easy. Well, they say the only easy day was yesterday. That's like it is in business. And you don't only have people that you serve with, you know, in harm's way, but your family now. You've got to think about that. You're putting everything on the line. I gave up a really good job to start this, and that was a very big, a very big leap that I took to do that. But I made sure I researched. I did the research and development for two years before I launched this, and then just started calling experts in the field and surrounding myself with people like that. Was basically how I did it. Yeah. Yeah. How about how about you, Ivan? What would you say? What veteran resources are out there? Well, I was the vice chairman for SCORE, uh, which is the counseling arm for the Small Business Administration. And SCORE has over 360 offices throughout the United States. What makes them unique is they have over 11,000 retired executives from every industry, every occupation you can imagine. These individuals are highly educated. Uh, they've retired and they just want to give back to the community and do something with their life. So they come to the table to counsel uh, people who are entrepreneurs thinking about going into business and or small businesses. And they teach them how to operate efficiently and effectively. They have a large number of programs like business planning that they teach. They help them with their financials. They help them with their market research. We have people in technology that help them bring uh, or put together a strong marketing base for social media. Uh, so that's just one resource. But And all their services are free. Mm -hmm. So there's a SCORE office in any community that you live. So anybody who is interested in, in starting a business or needs assistance with their business, look them up. They're right there, right there where you live. The other resources are local community colleges and universities. Uh, I used to teach entrepreneurial courses, business plan writing, marketing, finance, uh, venture capital gaining in small local community colleges. These would be night courses that would be two hours, three hours a shot. Um, their fees are minimal. They might charge you $150 for the course. And you have professionals come in from the community that will teach the courses in a variety of topics uh, that you can choose from. So you have that uh, that you can choose from. And there are also a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations out there that are business oriented that help uh, business entrepreneurs get into business. So that's just a couple of resources that veterans are able to access uh, if they're interested in getting into business. Yeah, there, I was waiting. Huh? If I can add to that, also Bunker Labs is another great organization. They have them about 16 cities now. A friend of mine is the Chief Development Officer, Blake Hogan's United States Marine. Unfortunately, they didn't have a lot of these programs when I first started, but now I'm telling them military veterans out there are so many resources just like Ivan talked about uh, MIC military influencers conference uh, they have them every year that's some of the best and brightest 
young veteran entrepreneurs. I think Damon Johns is getting involved with that from Shark Tank and some of the companies that are veteran owned that's been on Shark Tank. You'll see them appear there. And it also, sometimes you'll get lessons and stuff. Make sure it's a person that actually owns a business because you have a lot of people out there that's accountants and lawyers and that think they know business, but they really never ran a business. So make sure that you have someone that's been down the trenches like you have that's developed something out of nothing. And we said there's so many examples, like when you've talked about from Hilton, Marriott, Walmart, these giant corporations that men you never thought could create something like that. It's iconic brands in our country today, even Nike itself. Oh, those were like some great resources. And I kept waiting. So where's the punchline? It only costs you $10,000. And then Ivan, you're like, it's free. And I'm like, well, hey there. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to take the work that goes into it because it's, you have these dreams of owning your own business, but as soon as you get there, you realize how many hours, because you say, I want to quit working at this factory, all that, I want to be my own boss, but be careful what you wish for because Everything, the buck stops with you for sure there. Everything comes back to you. Yeah, and all of those resources, I'm sure, I mean, it takes time. Like you said, you were in planning for two years before you even jumped on it. And so, and I'm sure I've been with you with those, with the teaching and the courses and all of those, you don't just go and do it and next week you're in. It takes, it takes the time. Like you said, it, it, people see the outcome. They don't see know the mountain you climbed before you reach no. that top it yeah. it takes a lot of effort and one of the things is a counselor for score that you know i've seen time and time again is people will come in and they'll want to start a business without even knowing in totality what it'll take to start that business and they think because they're starting a business people are or banks are just going to give them money you know, and that's their first question. Where do I get the money to do this? Banks aren't, and, and as a former loan officer, I can tell you this, uh, banks are not going to give you money if you have no concept of what you're doing. They want to see a business plan. They want to see a financial plan. Even if it's just a one-page business plan or a three-page business plan or a 30-page business plan, they want to know that you have uh, the knowledge and experience to grow that business or build that business and grow it. As a loan officer, one of the things that we did is we would go into businesses and we would dissect them to make sure that they knew what they were doing, uh, that they were operating profitably and efficiently so that we would get a return on right. our investment in, in them. The banks are looking for the same thing for small business owners, even the business, small business administration uh, has requirements for their Patriot loans. Right. Uh, you oh. got to put forth the effort. You got to do your homework. And that's what SCORE and some of these organizations will help you do. They'll help you lay that foundation. Yeah, but, you know, don't waste time. Get, go to these resources, get your ducks in a row, and then start applying wh what you've learned. And then once you've applied, you're there, you're doing it. Um, and that doubt comes in and the naysayers, because sometimes the closest people to you are those naysayers and that are fear based. So how did each of you get past that part of it? Cause that's a big part. Sometimes people are, you know, it gets hard. Everybody's get putting all of these doubts into their mind and they throw their hands up and they walk away before they give that extra you know, they get past that hurdle. So what were some things that you did? Like I said before, what I normally did was look at examples in the industry, look at people from my kind of background that served in the military, something where I was from in Indiana, just different things that I could relate to. Once I could relate to these people and not put them on this giant pedestal, you know, they put their pants on just the same way I do. And that's what gave me the confidence to push through. And that's, I got started through a picture of Express Loans, how I got started, but that's not really what got me over the hill, uh, my uh, my attorney told me to call a man named Robert Lippman. And Robert's third generation uh, distributed wine and spirits here in uh, Tennessee. I believe it was his grandfather or his dad. I can't remember the story, but they were the very first distributors of Jack Daniels. So the Motlow family came into their office in 1939. And I came about 69 to 70 years later because I called him on the phone and just told him what I had. I cold called him. All I can do is say no, right? 
Well, he actually answered his phone that night, and he said, he said, Travis, uh, since you're a veteran, I'll give you 20 minutes. So I came prepared. I had my pitch. I had, you know, over a year of research then, research and development. And he listened to my story, and that's when he seen the passion and the drive that I had. And that changed it for me because I only had to have one investor. You know, so hopefully yeah. that helps me make some less mistakes in the future that I would have made on my own by surrounding myself with a good team. You know, neither one of us are perfect. We both can learn from each other because sometimes when you've been in the industry so so long, the Japanese call it a Kaizen. You want fresh eyes, someone new to the company that can look at it and see all these opportunities that you may become blind to or jaded to because of the haters or because of this. So, you know, don't let people rain on your parade or crush your dream. If you think you can do it and you got the confidence to do it and you know, go for it. But like I said, I was glad I was naive at first because if I know what I do now, I would have been a lot more cautious. But that's part of it. You got to get in the game at some time. Yeah. Well, that is part of it. You don't know. And so you are. I think if most business owners actually knew, they might think think twice. But then, it's a, you know, your life's full of regrets at that point. Yeah. Look at some of the stories like Mark Cuban and Dana John talking about sleeping in their car and Daniel Early from Grunt Style. His story is amazing. I drew, I sold everything I had just about to start my business. And I had a really nice BMW and I started driving an 85 Honda Accord with 350,000 miles on it. No air conditioning. So on the, I drove 86 miles one way to Nashville when I first started, 86 miles on the way back. I have to keep the window down. As long as the summertime, as long as there was a lot of traffic, it was okay. But if not, you were sweating. I had to keep extra clothes in the back, it's just times like that. But that's what makes it worthwhile because like I say, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it and you wouldn't have the reward of, you know, going through those obstacles. Uh, I love, I, I love that story. I mean, how about you? I mean, I have you for a car. I don't know how many people like, you know, a $300,000 uh, mile car on it. How many people would actually do that? I think if most people said, hey, here are your two choices. Are you gonna walk through the mud? Are right. you gonna do it? They, they, it would, it would be hard, but that's that's the reality of it. I mean, how about you, Ivan? What, what, what advice do you give for those naysayers? I, I love what you said about grunt style. Uh, <laughs> having having been a ground pounder in the military, uh, you know, one of the things that they they teach us is how to be aggressive, how to overtake uh, any obstacle that's in our way. And, you know, that just becomes part of second nature. So as veterans, we're a little bit more aggressive than the non-veteran community. Uh, we also have a tendency to surround ourselves with people who are more positive, people who are team workers. So, you know, when you get out of the military, uh, as I had mentioned in a previous podcast, we have a tendency to lose our connections. You know, we... we just don't stay uh, in touch with people that we served and we don't really stay in touch with the military community and the communities that we're in. Uh, so that's what we need to do. You know, you need to surround yourself uh, with people who are going to lift you up and get rid of the people who are going to pull you down. We have a saying that you can't fly with eagles if you're a pigeon. If you want to be be an eagle, you get a fly. Uh, you got to be an eagle to fly with eagles. So yeah. that's who you surround yourself with: people that are successful, people that are driven, and you can find those people in SCORE. These are retired executives. You can find those people in the military business community that you're in. Uh, give you an example: I'm currently in Massachusetts. We have uh, 69,000 small veteran-owned businesses in the state of Massachusetts alone, and this is one of the smallest states in the United States. They did $282 billion in revenue last year alone. So, I have no idea. That's like my own order. No idea. Well, it was like oh, the military community is, is huge. We have... 3.7 million veteran-owned businesses throughout the United States that uh, did $2.7 trillion in revenue last year alone. Interesting. They are massive. The problem is, is that they're not connected. There's no network. Nobody's leveraging uh, each other's power within their communities. 
So this is what people who are interested in the military community need to do. They need to start connecting with fellow veteran entrepreneurs across the communities where they live and are doing business. You know, I find that is so true. And you know, I find in Tennessee, at least from my experience, you guys are doing it right. You guys know how to collaborate. You know how to um, work that network, which is Yeah, and we're getting awesome. better. And we're growing it more and more every year. I uh, know we, with my brand, you know, I started talking to a lot of realtors because a lot of realtors are veterans and Trevor Hart's a friend of ours called Trevor the Connector. Uh, but Trevor works for a friend of mine, John Bell, a, a real estate lawyer. So they have closing with a cause. So he hired a veteran and, and to Trevor through creating this program, closing with a cause has really grown his business. And so what they do, we find better known businesses as gifts to these people when they buy a home, hoping to get their business later on. But not only that, they don't ask me for free buy. Could Trevor come and buy two or three cases of it? As long as I sign them, they give it to people when they buy a new home. So I encourage realtors out there, find better known products out there like mine and other ones from bottle breacher to grunt style, give these products out. You know, don't ask for them for free from us all the time. We don't mind doing that. I give 10% of all my profits back to American veterans. We give a lot of free stuff all the time, but it's always great when we put that dollar down because you're buying something else from Walmart. You're buying something else over here. So why not support, you know, a true a certified veteran owned business and a product that does that. And, and that's that what tell great. me. Yeah, you yeah. just gave a huge nugget to realtors out there. Like, hello. <laughs> Yeah, it's an easy thing to do, and I'll be glad to sign bottles for them all day long, give them shout outs or whatever they want to do. And I know a lot of other better known companies would do that. So it's just yeah. keep building that community. And uh, that's what's helped me a whole lot. I mean, you can have a degree and a PhD and all that, but it's not as powerful as a network that we have. And if you can put that to work, it can really grow your business tenfold. It's great. Like, Travis, you have it in Tennessee, and Ivan, you have it. You're working on it all over through the all over the states you know like bringing that bond together that's that's um super cool and i really think when you talk about how to develop these networks i think you have to go through the steps when you go through the steps that all of you just you did both of you just spoke on that your network organically happens if you allow it you're humble and you allow it to happen and then you start being able to surround yourself because you're exposing yourself to those People that fill in the bank blanks, the ones that have gone through the steps already, and you can learn from them. But if you try to run to the top, you're gonna miss all of that value and all those, you know, those people below. But for the last question, because time, you guys flipped time. I'm not even gonna let you respond to that. I'm taking that one right there. You can't even respond, but I I would like to say something <laughs> else. We've been focusing on networking with with uh, businesses. Um what uh, veterans who are thinking about going into business or those who own a business need to know is that there are over 167 million people in the United States that belong to the military community. Our community is massive. They put over $3 trillion back into the economy through consumer spending last year alone. So when they're building their network, uh, they also need to uh, create customer loyalty programs that will entice the military community in the communities where they live in the marketplace where they're doing business or going to be doing business to, to give them their business. Now we did, uh, the chamber did a market study two years ago and 97% of the people in the military community indicated that they would prefer to give their business to a, a veteran-owned business than a non-veteran business that is doing nothing for the military community. And 86% of the non-military community indicated that they would do the same. So the consumer opportunities out there to build a network within the consumer community is just as important because many businesses aren't going to be selling just to businesses. Right. They're going to be selling to the end consumer. And those consumers will support fellow veterans. Yeah, okay. that, that is a good point. So closing, what do you think? Do you think veterans have an advantage? Veteran businesses have an advantage that maybe they're not taking? Or yes, they are taking. But do you think it's 
go with that. I, I want your opinion on that. The opportunity is out there, that's for sure, more than ever. But uh, just like it depends on the individual and what they're doing. You know, it's just it's very difficult for some to start their own business. For other people, it isn't. But it's the training we have in the military. What your job was in the military. What we went through is they break you down the military and build you back up. That's kind of what being an entrepreneur is. You get broken down sometimes, but you've got to be able to build yourself back up. And you've been through hard times in the military. You know what it's like to sacrifice, but you also know what honor, courage, and commitment is where you can provide a better product, a better brand, and do it better than other people that may not have the training that you've had. That's how I see it anyway. Mm. That's a perfect example, like visually. It is. Ivan? Well, absolutely. And, you know, I think I just highlighted uh, the opportunities in the veteran-owned business community and the military community. Uh, One more aspect of this is that there are tens upon tens of millions of non-veteran companies out there that would give preferential contracting, employment, and or uh, sales opportunities to veteran-owned businesses to support them in the communities. So on three levels, you know, we're massive. That Everybody loves a veteran. You know, when I was in, we got out, we were baby killers. But today's veterans, they love them. And they go out of their way to lift them up. And I have found that we get more support from the non-veteran companies than we do the veteran companies. So, you know, don't think that just because they're non-veterans, they're not gonna give you their business. Those are the most avid patriotic supporters that we have in the United States. Mm-hmm. And America deeply appreciates our veterans. Yeah, it's called yeah. supply diversity programs. A lot of companies, you can go to the website and look at supply diversity, they'll have specific programs looking for better known products just like that. Like I say, we're going up against some of the biggest companies in the world that have a war chest like you wouldn't believe, and they don't always play fair. I mean, I'm in the spirits business that was ran by the mob at one day, and sometimes you still think it is the way they, <laughs> the way they get up. Yeah, so the three-tier system, it's, it's set up for the big guys already, especially in the states that are controlled by the state. There's 13 states controlled liquor that's controlled by the state and that's very difficult to get into unless you have a massive war machine to roll it out that's why i say you're going to have patience and you've got in the industry i'm in a lot of industries like that i have a question is there a difference between the you know the vodka world the hard alcohol world or spirits world and then i what you're doing with the craft brewery building the craft brewery brands is are those laws different or are they no they vary from state to state and in some states don't require uh, that uh, you go through a distributor if you're a manufacturer of craft beer or they have a limitation on how much you can produce uh, before you actually have to go through distributors. Uh, so it's probably not as stringent as vodka is. Um, but again, it varies from state to state and you still have very similar competitors in that industry. So yeah, they both control both of the distributors have beer houses now, but it still makes it very difficult. The reason I didn't choose beer is because it has a shelf life. Vodka doesn't. I can stay on the shelf for a lot longer. But I do love beer, and there's a lot of people doing great things with that in, in the community. It's just, uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. That's the thing. Find something you love to do, and it makes it easier. It's not work. It's still work, but you still can push through that. The bad times, if you really love what you do. Yeah. If we can't sell it, we can drink it. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) And you have to test it. Like, Travis gave a great story when we did our interview earlier about testing, testing a vodka that you want, the distilleries or whatever it's called. I don't don't know the verbiage, but we did a lot of testing. Yeah, alcohol and beer and wine, they're kind of a little different. Beer and wine, they think, I don't know, like the national public television here gives us a free commercial. My business partner, because he donates a lot of money there. So let him do the beer and wine, but we're going to do a Heroes of Vodka one that said they can't do spirits because I guess they think that, you know, gets you drunker more than that. But if you look at the statistics of anything, that's not true. But <laughs> it's how they view alcohol. It's weird. That's funny. Well, it's it's a strange world out there, and sometimes we just don't try to figure it out. We just go with it the best we can. Yeah, well, thank you. Any last 
advice for anybody that's out there that's thinking of that you can give? Any last advice for our viewers today? I just say research, research, patience, patience, and patience. If you reach out to people like me and Ivan, be patient with us too because we're very busy. Make your your email. Sometimes it takes people four or five times to get in contact with me because I want to make sure you're serious about it. And it needs to have a format, you know, that we can understand and, and realize, you know, we're building our own businesses too. We love to help and there's a lot of programs out there for that because I've had a few people sometimes get kind of mad at me because I didn't respond back to them or something. And, you know, just something I wasn't interested in or something I didn't have the time for. But I know a lot of entrepreneurs out like that. We'd love to hear from people trying to do that. Just keep after us. Sometimes we'll do the best we can to get back to you. Yeah. Ivan, yeah. last closing words. Go for it. <laughs> you know, just like Nike says, just do it. You know, and and once you put forth that effort, you know, and do your due diligence, you might not find that the business that you're interested in is actually the business you're going to go into you know and you may find something else that's related or you may want to after you you realize you know that there's no opportunity there for you look at something else just don't give up don't give up that entrepreneurial spirit uh just keep looking great advice guys packed full of amazing content I knew you would bring it. Thank you so much for sharing um, your knowledge and taking the time because as you can see, everybody, you saw all the hats coming off of what they do. These are two very busy men. So take notes, replay, and then apply. And thank you, guys. Thank and you, Danny. Good night. Good take night. Care. Take care, Ivan. Bye. You too, Travis. Mm.